Yes, welcome to Easy Gates uh, TRB Polytechnic Easy Paper Solutions. So we'll answer the next problem. This one from uh, Digital Electronics. Okay, first we'll understand the problem. Each of eight full adders in an eight bit ripple carry adder exhibits the following propagation delay. So each of eight full adders means that means we have eight full adders making an eight bit ripple carry adder. There are two adders, one is a ripple carry addition process, another one is a CLA addition. So rarely people will get into the CLA addition, carry look ahead uh, concept. Okay, so we'll perform a bit ripple carry addition ripple carry adder we have that is constructed by using eight full adders so that means it goes like this we have a full adder producing the sum and carry by sensing three inputs actually we have the bit and then the previous carry okay say for example let me take the data as, for example, I have, yes, uh, A to sum and C out, B to sum and C out. What is that? A to sum, B to sum and C out. Okay, we have to understand. So, what is marking? Okay, so let me say my data is A data and B data. A data will range from A7, A6, a5, A4, A3, A2, A1, A0. That's my A data. Similarly, B data will be 8 bit, right? So B7, B6, B5, B4, B3, B3, B2, B1, B0. So each full adder will have a corresponding bit. So here, assuming it's a MSB full adder, so it is going to sense A7, B7 as the data inputs. And the previous carry, so let me call the previous carry as, uh, so let me begin here. For example, LSB full adder will have this inputs. So it will have A0 as a LSB of the input data, A0, LSB of the B data, it is B0. Then the previous carry, we usually take it as C minus 1. That will be connected to 0 because, so that's a first bit addition. So for that, you don't need a full addition. Of addition is enough. So take... Off addition means two bit addition. Full addition means three bit addition, including carry. So addition without carry is off addition. Addition with carry is a full addition. So this is going to produce the sum S0 and carry C0. So that means C0 is going to serve as a input for the next full adder. If that is the case, <clears throat> so if you have A0, B0, it is C minus one means same logic. A7, B7 means it's one less. So it's going to be C6. Okay, so like that we have eight full adders okay so this is the one going to produce the final sum bit so b naught a naught means s naught c naught means this is going to be yes seven and this is going to be the carry seven so the final result will be read as c7 s7 s6 some six some five some four some three some two some one some zero that's your final result of a plus b with the final carry being C7, okay? So this is how an 8-bit addition has to be done, okay? So it is referred by a 9-bit solution. So two 8-bit data added means it's going to be a, it can be a 9-bit solution, assuming there is a overflow. So indicated by the carry bit C7. Yes, this is the arrangement. So there are in every block, there is a sum generated, there is a carry generated. So first understand what he is talking about. So let me take a full ladder and first understand he has given some delay. Designer has given some delay and what delay is talking about. Let me take this bit. So let me take the LSB adder, full ladder. C minus one is the input. A naught is the input. B naught is the input. It is producing a sum S naught and producing a carry C naught. Assuming he is talking about this, A to sum and C out is 14 nanoseconds he is giving. A to sum, B to sum, okay, and C out is, okay. So C into sum, 
okay c into c out okay then so he has given after a and b is ready after a and b is ready okay to generate sum and to generate c out it takes 40 nanoseconds so he's talking about that delay this delay is 40 nanoseconds so after a not b not becomes reliable data after a change is allowed in a not b not and assuming they are steady now at time t equal to 0 nanoseconds after 40 nanoseconds it will give a reliable sum and carry bit okay c not and s not okay that's one thing he's talking about 40 nanoseconds then c into sum is given c in is the carry input of this so then so c into sum is given us 35 nanoseconds c in mean this is a carry in this carry to sum not let me take that is given as 35 nanoseconds okay then c into c out is given as 25 nanoseconds this delay is given as 25 nanoseconds this is your understanding so then so the carry is quickly propagating from c minus 1 to c not okay it is okay after c minus 1 is ready okay then it takes only 25 nanoseconds okay for the carry to propagate c into c out c into sum is getting late that is going to be 35 nanoseconds then a not b not delay is given a not b not affecting the result is given uh, delay of 40 nanoseconds that is the worst delay out of the three delays given okay so 25 35 and 40. So determine the total maximum time for the addition of two 8-bit numbers. So two 8-bit numbers, what will be the maximum time? Say for example, let me go with uh, one more bit addition. So this is my, this is FA0 and this is FA7. Let me say this is a full ladder for one bit. So this is going to be A1, this is going to be B1. But remember, you're going to present all the data at time t equal to 0 nanosecond to perform addition. To add to 8-bit addition. So all this data will be presented, assume, at time t equal to 0 nanosecond. And this also given at 0 nanosecond. It's connected to the ground. Okay. Yes, this is what given us. These are all steady at this is 0 at from nano, 0 nanoseconds. So these are all steady by 0 nanosecond. After that, what is the real delay? This C0 is connected as an input for this. Once I get the budget of this, okay, up to 2 beta, okay, addition, then it is easy to propagate further and till the MSB full adder. So this is S1 and this is C1. Okay, so let us play. Okay, this is how you need to think in the examination also. We don't have any preloaded answer for every problem. Okay, right? Go by the logic and get the solution. Okay, but he said after A0, B0 is ready and this C-1 ready. C-1 ready means, he's talking about only C-1. C-1 ready means, okay, then C0 is ready by what time? As per the given command, it's ready by 25 nanoseconds. But after A, B ready, and what is the time taken for C in, for some logic, C out, okay, after A, B ready, okay, uh, to produce C out and sum, he said, so A to sum and C out is 40 nanosecond, B to sum and C out, B to sum and C out means uh, B data changes, what time sum and C out is getting generated means 40 nanoseconds. So let me take that way means if A, B ready means this is ready by 40 nanoseconds, this is ready by 40 nanoseconds. Okay, then let me take this way. A not B not ready by zero. This is ready by zero. But uh, the carry propagation says it is ready by what time? 25 nanosecond. But the A to C out is saying 40 nanosecond. Therefore, I need to take the worst case only means. So C not and S0 are ready only by 40 nanosecond, I will say. So this is ready by 40 nanosecond. C0 data ready by 40 nanosecond, but these two are waiting from 0 nanosecond. But, uh, okay, so zero. this is waiting from uh, 0 nanosecond means, so it will take, if A1, B1 is affecting your C1, it will take only that uh, 40 nanosecond. Okay, but uh, this is waiting from 0. 
okay some partial products are already ready means uh, how to proceed now for the next block means so this is available by 40 and this data is waiting so you need to have a perception that so again it won't take 40 nanosecond from this that means this is not going to make a uh, a1 b1 ready by zero means by 40 nanoseconds c1 s1 will be ready is not a logical conclusion okay so now it is ready by 40 these data are waiting and even without knowing what is internal to the full adder we can go for a logical conclusion so this is ready by 40 means and s1 will be ready by what time c into sum is given as uh, 35 means it is ready by 75 nanosecond and this is getting ready by what c1 will be ready by 25 nanoseconds that means another 25 nanosecond i need to add so it is going to be 65 nanosecond so by 65 nanosecond c1 will be ready s1 will be ready by 75 nanosecond i'll go with this logic okay so once c0 is ready after c0 is ready it takes only another 25 nanosecond to make c1 ready so that's a logical conclusion we should make okay so that's also reasonable you got the logic now you can go for successive bits then so c0 to so the conclusion is this now So S not produced after 40 nanoseconds. Okay, S not is produced after 40 nanoseconds. C not got produced. Okay, C not got produced after 40 nanoseconds. Then C1 will get produced at what time means another 25 nanosecond means it will get produced at 65 nanosecond. If that is the case, C2 will get produced after another 25 means like that it goes on if that is a case c6 to c7 also going to be another 25 nanosecond so at what time c7 will be ready will calculate okay c7 yes first let us calculate after what time c6 will be ready so then the transition is from c0 to c1 c1 to c2 so this is one this is two c1 to c2 then c2 to c3 will be three okay c2 to c3 then c3 to c4 c4 to c5 so this is three so first one c0 to c1 second c2 c1 to c2 c2 to c3 will be three so this will be four this will be five this will be six okay so six into c6 will be ready okay by six into 25 nanoseconds that is nothing but 150 nanoseconds so that means this is 40 c0 ready by 40 and c6 will be ready by uh, another 150 means so 40 plus 150 so it's ready by 190 nanosecond yes that's a real problem here so c6 is ready so now play for the final full ladder that is fa7 full ladder so here we have a7 okay and we have b7 this is your c6 so c6 ready by what time 190 nanosecond then after that what time sum will be generated what time c7 will be generated now yes why i'm cautious here means because carry to sum generation is taking more time that is going to have 35 nanosecond means yes this will be 35 nanosecond means and this is 25 nanosecond means this is available by 215 nanosecond and this is available by 190 plus 35 that's going to be 225 nanoseconds will be the worst case propagation delay is yes, the correct answer is 225 nanosecond yes hopefully that's a correct answer so let us confirm okay so as data given a b c all are available at time t equal to zero the first block alone will take 40 nanosecond to produce some and carry because reason is here after a b ready okay so it takes 40 nanoseconds so there itself i played with the 40 nanosecond delay only for the first uh, uh, lsb addition i went for uh, 40 nanosecond delay to produce s naught and c naught suppose if you take by mistake 25 nanosecond here then 50 nanosecond you'll be short instead of 225 okay so less than 225 you will get but nobody is there in the option less than 225 therefore this is 
seems to be a reasonable one. Suppose if you commit a mistake of uh, 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 giving the answer is 215, yes, the designer is helping you, okay, by not giving 215. So the worst case delay. The total maximum time for the addition of the two bit numbers, two eight bit numbers is the final sum production. So the final sum is available by what time means? So I'm just getting delayed. So C7 is available by 250 nanoseconds, whereas S7 is available by 225 nanoseconds. So therefore, the entire result, the 9-bit result is reliable only after 225 nanoseconds. That means this 8-bit ripple carry adder can complete the, an 8-bit addition only after 225 nanoseconds. This is talking about the speed of this adder model. It's always poor comparing to the CLA. Everyone knows. Okay, yes. So the answer, right answer for this problem is 225 nanoseconds, okay? So we have a material to strongly conclude this, okay? That's a fundamental connecting this. So. Let us get into the next problem. Yes. Another digital problem. So a uh, mistake uh, probably, okay, from the DTP side, I guess. Probably, uh, okay, what is the font? Font, probably, we never use a word called font in uh, sequential design. Probably uh, a printing mistake, it is F out. Okay, that's what I feel. So instead of giving F out, he has mentioned font. Font is not a frequency. Okay, right? We know that. So what is the F out for the circuit shown in the following figure when 8 kilohertz square wave is applied as a clock input of flip-flop? Yes. As an engineer, okay, you should know what exactly the a point you want to convey here. So yes, you need to have such a small extra perception for the problem. Then you can go ahead with the problem. So he's looking for the frequency. All the options are given in frequency only. So what is F out, okay? So for that first you should know, okay, what is the uh, count sequence of this counter? What is the counter given synchronous or asynchronous? So we have the F in the clock. So treat uh, all the flip-flops are positive edge triggered flip-flops. So refer the positive edge uh, of the clocks, okay? Positive edges of the clock signal. So then only the first flip-flop is sensing this clock, rest of them are, derived clock so this is going to be an asynchronous design an asynchronous counter in asynchronous counter we have a logic what is the logic in asynchronous yes the moment you see asynchronous immediately that logic should strike what does that strike okay so if all the flip-flops are positive it's triggered if q drives the clock of the subsequent flip-flops. If all the flip-flops are positive, it's triggered. Q drives the clock means it is going to be a down counter. It's going to be a down counter. Provided all the flip-flops are in toggle mode. Yes, it is all the flip-flop. Because in asynchronous, we use only toggle flip-flops or JK in toggle mode. Okay, so JK 1, 1. So 1, 1, 1, 1. All are in toggle mode. All the JK flip-flops are in toggle mode. For simplicity, you assume we use a toggle flip-flops only, okay? So one means toggle, it's toggle. That means all the flip-flops are set to toggle when they receive the positive clock edge, okay? For the clock input, okay? That clock input may be driven by the master clock or may be driven by the uh, derived clock from, so see, for example, QA drives the clock of QB. QB drives the clock of the flip-flop QC. So it's going to be a down counter. Yes, down counter means, yes, you can start from all zeros. That's easy. Okay, so first count, first clock is arriving. Then the count, what is the sequence? What is your data? Who is your uh, MSB? Who is your LSB? That's what you should be clear about. Okay, who is your LSB? So QA will be your, yes, that's very important. Okay, for that you have a straight transition first, for example. Okay, so let me have uh, the clock positive edges of the clock okay so we we, uh, we used to forget okay who is msb who is lsb so this is my clock i'm just marking the clock edges positive edges of the clock now let me trace 
QA first. So I need to freeze who is MSB flip-flop, who is the LSB flip-flop. So let me trace QA. Assume all are initially zero, QA is zero, QB is zero, QC also zero. Then let me read the first state. So 0, 0, 0 is the initial state. Let me assume for QA, QB, QC. First clock is arriving. And QA is only toggle means then QA is going to toggle like this. QA is going to toggle like this. Now, your QA is going to serve as a clock for QB means mark the positive edges of QA. And then QB is going to trigger. Okay. That is toggle. Okay. At every passage offered by the QA and again mark the passage of your QB because QB is serving as a uh, clock for the QC. So then QC is going to sense this passage. It is also going to toggle. Okay. So here it is going to remain in one. Now read the state. Okay. So then because we know very well it is a down counter. Then you can read this is one. This is one and this is zero. Sorry. It is also one. Next will be one, one, zero. Therefore QA is serving as LSB and QC is serving as a MSB. Okay, so QC is serving as a MSB. So then the count it is going to pass through is going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, like that. It goes up to all zeros. Okay, so then it's MSB bit means okay, so then it is going to function. There is no uh, asynchronous clear for the flip flops, so it's a uh, going to count all the states, all the allowed states, it is going to count. That means it's going to be a full mod counter. It is going to be how many bits? Three bits. How many states? Eight states. It's a mod eight counter. So it's a divided by eight counter. That means your F out will be divided by F out will be F clock divided by your mod number. Okay. That's a basic mod number is eight divided by eight. So we'll, that will be the frequency. Okay. So, or you can take, uh, for example, that's one mark, very easy problem. Given you can refer the waveform. If you go by the waveform, then after the clock edge, this is the first clock edge, this is the second clock edge, first, second, after the eighth clock edge, okay, all the data will come back to zero. This will come back to zero after the eighth clock edge. That means th that is your waveform, okay, right? So where it is going to toggle again, it is going to uh, one minute, eighth clock, eighth clock, it won't toggle. Then when it is offering a positive edge. So this is the positive edge of this. So this is a positive edge of this. And this is where it is going to toggle. Okay. The next toggle will happen only in the eighth clock. So this is going to toggle like this. So this is a third clock. Okay. So this is your QC. So QC initially going to be in one. Oh, one minute. Let me have a small check. Better you go with this trace. Let me have the clock ticks one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So let me trace QA. QA will be this. Simply it knows toggle. So that's how we can help in the examination. QA will simply toggle. Okay, that's your QA. And looking for the positive edges, QB will toggle accordingly. So this is your QB. QB toggles here and then toggles here. And then toggles here and then toggles here. Okay, right. That's how the QB goes. Mark the positive edges of QB. Then we'll see the waveform of QC. Okay, that's important. We are talking about that frequency only. Okay. Yes. Then you need not to mark the positive edges of QC because QC is not acting as a clock for anything else. Okay. Yes, this is how it goes. Okay, then the moment you present the next stage, automatically all will go to one again. Okay, all will toggle. Okay, yes, now you know the frequency. So confidently we can say, okay, this is the first clock, second clock, third, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth clock. So between one to nine, you have time space of 80 clocks. One to nine, you have a time because this is what we call as a T clock. Okay, so we have eight such T clock making the complete cycle of your 
QC. This is the time period of your QC. So the time period of QC is nothing but eight times your T clock. As the time period is eight times that of the T clock, and the frequency is equal to one by T. So it is going to be one by eight times your T clock. That's a fundamental. So then F of QC will be equal to F clock divided by eight. That's what I said straight away. F clock by eight. So just know the F clock. Divide by eight. That's your answer. So eight kilohertz is your clock frequency. Therefore, the answer must be eight by eight. It is one. That's a concrete conclusion. Strongly, we can say the answer is eight. Uh, sorry, one kilohertz. Okay, eight by eight. Eight kilohertz by eight. Okay. Yes. In the last minute, last step, we should not commit a mistake. Okay. So we should not choose eight. Eight by eight. It is. It is one only. Okay. That's a correct answer for this problem. So, uh, two interesting problems. One based on uh, full ladder combination logic design arithmetic operation. Another one again into the sequential. In sequential, we got good number of problems. Okay, it's one more sequential using asynchronous three bit down counter. The logic is very important. When you have a positive edges, it's triggered flip flops, and Q is driving the clock. Definitely, it is a down counter. Then instead of Going through the excitations and all, straight away go by down counting principle, it will work. Yes, that is the uh, prerequisite here. If you know that, it's very easy. Okay. So, with this, let me conclude this video. So, we'll uh, update you with one more video. Yes. And I uh, hope you are happy with the content delivered. Okay. You can subscribe our uh, channel and also pause your comments if anything necessary. Okay. Thank you.